call the meeting to order. We have a motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Is all the agenda for the January 16th meeting of Council be received? Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Are there any motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen? Is all the minutes of the January 2nd, 2018 regular meeting of Council be adopted as received? Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, uh, on your agenda, item 4-1 on our agenda, we have Carly Minish regarding the Veterans Hall Food Labeler grant application. Welcome to our council meeting, Carly. Thank you. Yeah. I'll just, uh, I have a little package for everyone. Just a little information package for everyone. I should, I should add, I'm actually Carly Minish Whitting now. I just got married, so I have another name to add to my name. Um, so like uh, Mr. McKenzie mentioned, my name is Carly Minish. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I grew up here in the Swan River Valley. Um, I call this place home. And I'm very excited, uh, Naya, thank you all for taking the time today to listen to me kind of um, tell you a little bit about this funding program that the town has been, um, a, has applied for and has received. And also, I think it's about time I got here and kind of told uh, everyone a little bit about Smack Dab and how we're using the processing facility and how it has helped us grow in our business. So into that, I'm just gonna kind of do a little overview first. Um, so Smack Dab has been renting this facility for three years now, and it has been critical to the growth and expansion of our company. If some of you don't know Smack Dab, we craft a line of gourmet mustards. Um, and they're sold here at the co-op. Um, so, so due to this facility, uh, SmackDab has grown from a mere uh, 60,000 revenue in our first year to just over 275,000 this year um, in just our third year. So the growth is quite great and we owe every little bit of credit to that facility here in uh, Swan River and every single jar is produced here in the valley. We predict um, that we have probably produced over 200,000 units in that facility so far. Um, however, there are certain aspects of our production that are slowing us down and holding us back from real growth. Uh, labeling has always been one of those crucial steps in our production, but one that is time consuming and tedious. And with the addition of this semi-automatic labeler that I'm going to touch on a little bit more in a second, uh, to this food processing center, not only will we be able to streamline our labeling process, but we'll be able to add a coating to our jar for traceability, which will allow us to have better record keeping if there's ever any case where we call or any sort of thing like that. And this will save us time and money down the road and will allow us to scale up our production and ultimately grow smack that a little bit more. Uh, we project that because of this labeler, we will be able to scale up our production immensely and increase capacity, which will allow us to pursue bigger customers and expand our distribution. And we predict that because of this, we will be able to hire, oh, sorry, need to rent the kitchen approximately two to four days extra per month and hire two local employees to help us um, kind of meet this demand. So you're probably wondering what are the benefits to you guys as the town for this labeler. Um, not only are we incredibly proud to produce smack dab here in Swan River, and we are very proud to tell everyone that, but we intend to keep it that way for at least two, for at least two to three more years. Uh, in 2017 alone, we rented the facility 63 days, generating over $6,300 income for the facility. And with the addition of this labeler, we predict that we will rent the kitchen around 20 to 24 more days, bringing in revenue of 2000 to 2400 more dollars in 2018. So as you can see, I have a, uh, just a spec sheet also on the other side, just with a little bit more uh, information about this labeler. Um, it's a semi-automatic semi machine, means that it can run, uh, runs off an air compressor, uh, has a, a conveyor belt that passes the jars through, labels them, and codes them for proper record keeping. Uh, much more streamlined than the one we currently have and will allow us to really um, produce more, I guess, on a daily basis. And also you will see uh, just the breakdown of the different costs in this as well. But I'm gonna talk a little more about that. Um, so this funding, um, this funding is called the Commercial uh, Community Kitchen Food Enterprise Program. And basically this funding was uh, designed by uh, Manitoba Agriculture to help commercial kitchens or processing centers produce equipment to help processors scale up in the, in the facility they are in incre increased capacity. So basically how this funding works is if you apply, which uh, has happened and you get approved, 75% um, of that project will be paid for and returned back to you and 25% will just be 
what the applicant will have to pay for. So basically you're getting a piece of equipment for 75% of the price. So on the other, next page you'll just see a little breakdown of this, uh, the cost of this labeler for the facility. Um, the total cost is $13,420. That's with the different, um, the sensor added and the hot, co uh, the hot stamp coder for that traceability. Um, with the 75%, you will be returned $10,065, and there will be remaining $3,355 that will be remaining due. Um, and this uh, labeler will need to be in the facility. Uh, the end date is kind of around March 15th, and the governor needs to see that it's been in the facility to get the money um, reimbursed. Some additional info, just little tidbits here, that we will cover, SmackDab will cover any other expenses uh, to get the machine to Swan River, including setup and day-to-day -day maintenance. My father, many of you might know Blair Menish, he's quite handy, he's good with machinery. He has uh, agreed to take on the duty of maintaining the machine and um, little maintenance things here and there. So you're probably wondering where is this 25%, this $3,355 going to come from? And we are presenting two different options that we are willing to work with the town um, for this reason. Um, option number one, we will cover the remaining cost, that $3,355 through additional rent. By adding $45 to each day of rent for 75 days, you will we will completely pay for that extra 25% outstanding. And after the 75 days, we will pay $10 each day to rent that labeler from the town. And we would kindly request to have exclusivity to this machine just for the reason that we will promise to take care of it. We cannot, it is an expensive piece of mach machinery. We wanna make sure that someone takes care of it and we can promise that we will be the ones to do that. We will maintain it and keep its quality at its best. Option number two that we are presenting is that we can reimburse the $3,355 and then $45 can be subtracted from our rent for 75 days until the money is paid off. And after that 75 days, SmackDab will pay $10 each day to rent the labeler. Again, any other options are welcome. We are open. These are just come that we came up with to help reimburse that money that the town is obviously fronting for this piece of machinery. Um, is there any questions about this? Councilor, do you have any questions? Councilor White. <coughs> what do they charge in, in other entities, other communities to rent a labeler? Is it 10 cents a you will be the You will be the first one to own a labeler of this kind. No other, to be honest, no other um, kitchens in Manitoba are quite up to par like the one in this in this town, which is actually pretty cool. I would say you guys have probably the best commercial kitchen in Manitoba, period. I Trust me, I've looked at all of them. Um, so you'll be the first to have it, for sure. Okay, let's say uh, that we follow through the process, and let's say we pick uh, option one or two really relevant in this instance. Let's say another person comes in and they want to make uh, cranberry jam, mm -hmm. and there's this device sitting there that works wonderfully well, mm -hmm. and for example, you and or your father train them on how to run them. Mm -hmm. It'd be a shame to have that piece of equipment sitting there and not let anybody else use it mm -hmm. who was trained appropriately. Yeah, that's fair. I think yeah, we'd definitely be open to discussing that situation if it ever came up, for sure. Okay. Yep. Councilor Gloria. You're well prepared. You answered a lot of, I came into this with a lot of questions and some apprehension, but you got all the bases covered that I was concerned about as far as where the other 25% was coming from. So. Mm -hmm. It sounds great. Councillor Morial. Hey, uh, Councillor White uh, touched on it a little bit, and it deals with uh, the exclusive access mm -hmm. to the machine. Um, the one issue I have right now is that 75% uh, of the dollars to purchase that machine is public funded dollars through, mm -hmm. through the province, which um, in a sense it says that that machine is 75% public. Yeah. Um, I have the issue with the exclusive access, as Councillor White says, if someone mm -hmm. else requires it and stuff like that. Um, for a, a publicly f owned piece of equipment yeah. um, that they cannot use or have to go through a third party um, that's willing to look at various options to do to purchase this with the, mm -hmm. the remaining 25 percent um, that's the portion I'm having for sure right now. and I was kind of prepared for that question um, the thing with machinery like this they are wonder fantastic and I think maybe one of the reasons why not a lot of facilities do have them is they are quite complex and they're quite intricate so they're one of the reasons why we ask for exclusive access is because we wouldn't want anybody tampering with it and kind of messing with it they're very intricate and they are expensive for a reason because they do a good job when they're running and they're set up properly so our fear would be that somebody that wasn't trained properly would start using it maybe 
tweak a few things and then it might not be as usable. So again, um, we would definitely be open to um, sharing it if the right circumstance came up and if someone was interested, um, we would definitely uh, look at that for sure. Councilor Gloria. Uh, just to, I guess, kind of reinforce uh, what uh, Mrs. Minish is saying, we have, we have automatic labelers at my place of employment and I can second that they're extremely finicky and extremely you do not want anybody, just anybody, to start tweaking them. So I, I don't, and I understand what Councillor Morio was saying about it being purchased with public money, mm -hmm. seventy-five percent of it. So I, I, some, some sort of balance would need to be whether whether it have to be vetted by by Carly yeah. or something, because you do not want it can be easily damaged. Our yeah. our, our automatic labelers at work are always they're a bit of a yeah. headache. They yes. can be a little bit of a headache. Yeah. Um, yeah, we would definitely be open to um, I, I, the person, since I do not live in Swan River at the moment, I do live in Winnipeg, I commute here once a month to produce. Um, my father would be the one that would have to be on hand. And I think that, again, it'd have to be a discussion with him if he'd be open to coming in and showing this person. But um, he, I know he would be concerned about somebody just not being aware of how delicate they are. And I do understand that asking for exclusivity is a lot to ask. I completely agree. And that's why we wanted to make sure after 75 days, paying that extra $45, you guys will be completely square. No cent will be out unbalanced. You know, you'll be square for that, the cost of that machinery. And then we will put, continue to pay rent to continue to use it after that time. So, more. so would you guys be interested or part of this is that to have our fall manager completely trained also in Lana? this? Yes. Yeah, for sure. We know we work really closely with Lana and if, yeah, we would definitely train her. I know my dad would like to spend time with her and show her for sure. Yeah, so yeah. Like if potentially as a solution yeah. is that if somebody else needs it, she could be there to that's set them. it up, vet them, for sure. yeah. tweak it and all that. Because mm -hmm. don't get us wrong, we don't want just anybody coming and wrecking it. That's the thing. And yeah. Yes, exactly. But no, I know Lana, she seemed interested in learning a little bit more about the machinery. I know that we would love to show her. I know my dad would definitely train her. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then between the two of them, they could yeah. figure things out. Yeah, for sure. Councilor White, just a thought. Now, say, being an optimist, that does happen, and you buy the thing, mm -hmm. and you bet somebody to use it, that person's going to have to be charged some sort of a number. Mm -hmm labeling or whatever so is it appropriate to ask you to consider in your travels in this industry say hey what do people charge to put a label on a jar and then we could use that as, mm. as a standard to charge somebody to use okay have to look into it i'm not sure other people charge no, no, no. to be honest yeah but somebody's charging somebody okay. somehow oh for sure yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, just a question who, who who would then cover the cost of any like it's a labeler how does the labeler work? Like, is there ink? Is there who 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 would pay for that? And how often does that have to be replaced? So we would definitely cover that charge. Yeah, we would cover the charge for the ink. Um, I think that should be only the only additional charge. It does have a one-year warranty. Sorry, that's one thing I should have included, or maybe I mentioned that does yeah, come with a one-year warranty if something does break. Um, but we would cover the cost, obviously, of our labels. But any sort of extra um, ink that need to go on there, we would cover that. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Any the comments? Comment, Carla? When you're one. So thank you very much for your presentation. I think we're all aware of Smack Tab and uh, quite proud that it's actually produced here in Swan River. Okay. And uh, uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. And council will consider it. And yeah. Julie or somebody will get back to you for sure. next day or two. And I do understand this is a lot to consider, <laughs> um, but I do really appreciate you taking the time to consider it. Thank you guys very much. And once again, thank you for supporting a local business and a local entrepreneur. So thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And also, I should note, um, I did put Jane Kilgard's uh, contact info on the, on the bottom. She is the represent representative for the Manitoba Agriculture for this funding program. If you need any questions answered, maybe one I might not be able to answer specifically, um, she's, yeah, contact her. Or my card's also on in the package. If you have any more questions, feel free. Thanks Thank for your you. time, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Maybe so that Rick doesn't have to sit here with all of this. We can move down in our agenda. I have nothing to hide. <laughs>
So you're getting into retirement. <laughs> okay, we'll continue on. Then we have the letter from the Manitoba Métis Federation regarding the Youth Empowerment Conference for Council's information. Okay. Aren't they looking for They're looking for funding. That or yeah, it's not an RU. Not in our criteria for contributions. Okay, zoning for cannabis. There's a guide for Manitoba municipalities. Okay, that's for information for council. Councilor Gloria. So, how, what is the process going to, probably our, our zoning committee should meet to see what things we want to adopt and, and is administration ready to, do you guys want to have some recommendations for shares for, for meeting first yeah, or? We do need a bit of more time. So we'll talk about this in the future then, but we should not leave it too long. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second item under cannabis, uh, MSBA memorandum with municipalities uh, regarding cannabis and retail buffer zone. Any comments on that? Be thorough. A little backtrack to the smack dab presentation. There's a resolution here, but I'm thinking the resolution that is here is, is basically dealing with the grant, to accept the grant. I'm wondering if council wishes to uh, amend or change the resolution so that we either accept or reject one of the options that was presented by Ms. Minich. Or have it in a second resolution. I could put it in a second resolution. Well, we can have the, this resolution to accept the agreement with the province and then we, we should get administration to, to develop an, uh, an actual agreement based okay. on these options and then next meeting we can have a uh, sign the agreement. Okay. So I'm going to backtrack <coughs> to that resolution then. We have the resolution uh, moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the Chief Financial Officer be authorized to sign the attached letter on the offer received from Manitoba from the Minister of Agriculture. Discussion? If I may. Yeah. Would, would Council be willing to go into an just so that we don't have a private entity purchasing our assets, could we purchase it and then enter into like a? That, that's one of that's one of her agreement? that's one okay. of our yeah. her agreement or okay. her okay. options. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I missed that. Too. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Going to item six one on your agenda. We have the proposal to subdivide. Uh, northeast quarter section 163627 West discussion. We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, was all that the proposed subdivision of uh, part of northeast quarter of 163627 and the numbered by Manitoba Municipal Relations Community and Regional Planning Branches file 4455 17 7423 be hereby approved. Discussion? Councillor Morial. Oh, it just opened up here. I was just going to ask, is this the reach file? It is. <laughs> All in favor? Carried. Thanks. You can whole thing if you want. Hmm? You can stay for the whole thing. I'm not that retired. <laughs> <laughs> You're retired. <laughs> Now there's another one on here, okay. It was added in, Julie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved the proposed subdivision of lots 13, 14, and 15, block 37, plan 370, Dauphin Land Titles Office, and numbered by Manitoba Municipal Relations and Community Regional Planning Branch, is filed 4455-17-7427, be hereby approved. Do you want to explain what that is? Um, that one is um, what the owners are proposing to do is to reconfigure the two lots and transfer a portion of an L-shaped lot to the neighboring landowners as shown in a sketch. Um, so there is a sketch that shows you what they're planning to do. So all three lots are owned by these two individuals?
Now the council's had a chance to look at any further questions to Julie. <coughs> it says reconfigure the uh, L-shaped lot <coughs> for the landowners. Um, who are those people? Uh, and like, have they been talked to or approached that their property may get bigger, which would affect? <coughs> yeah, I think this is something that. <coughs> property owners have <coughs> um, and gone over with each other. Oh, okay. but yeah, it My says information like the, is over there. <laughs> it says like the landowners are wishing to uh, reconfigure, but then the L shape is to be transferred to neighboring landowners. But are the neighboring landowners in agreement to? Um, under the proposal, it has. Uh, the three corners that Scotland can hunt and step definition. But it but anyway if you read further hunt and definition sounds like they're they own that together. Oh okay. Okay. I don't really have any other information other than than this is what <coughs> sent. I haven't actually, you know, had any conversations with them. Um, I think since we just got these <coughs> recently, I need more time myself to read through these documents before I can make a decision on this. I propose we defer this till next meeting. I probably use a good thing to just ride them guests this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can phone them and see what's up. Sure. Yeah. I usually don't have any contact with the subdivision applicants at all in these cases because they they go they're all done behind the scenes. They're all done from planning branch and, and they just send all this information. They're showing us what's proposed, but they don't really show us what's existing. Like. Okay. Eric, have you had a chance to look at this? Yeah, the way I, I look at it, it's just the, the it's turning, a, I wish I had a blackboard or something. The original lot is this plus this L piece, and they're just creating this as the legal property, so they're cutting off the L. It's L. Like it's nothing in the way. Okay, so, this, so that becomes their property, this becomes their property. That's right. Right, so the legal line used to come over here and include this piece. Mm -hmm. It is not going to cut off right through the center. So what's the wish of council? Yeah. We we'll leave it for two weeks and get some more info. Okay. So um, will you table that resolution? Okay. So I lost track. I'm sorry, guys. Used here, where can we go? We're gonna go back up to <coughs> two six two two. To install curb and gutter and pavement on the 300 block of 12th Avenue South, and the 12 and 1300 block of Third Street South. Derek. So this is the local improvement for the uh, 12th Avenue South and Third Street South curb and gutter and pavement, and the prep for it. Uh, right now, we're looking at. A public hearing of February 20th, so we would like the advertisements to go on January 22nd. So that'll include a prepayment option, or they can finance, and we, we would like your direction on either 10, 15, or 20 years. So Julie, between now and the 22nd, is going to get uh, interest rate from the banks, which it'll be a like a tentative kind of interest rate just to. We'll basically get one and add a few percent, and it will be a, a maximum estimate that we'll have on the advertisement. Because when it comes time to borrow, we'll go back to the bank and. So, so it'd be only the interest that'll be the variable for these landowners versus because the concrete and asphalt is all set prices. That's right. So yeah, the interest is the variable. Mm -hmm. Correct. So everything is a per foot frontage and flankage cost. 
that won't change. So, it, but of course, it'll change, and we have to set in this ad how many years we're going to take this over. So we would like we're, we have it as ten right now, but would council want twenty or fifty? Councilman Jacobson. Um, <clears throat> have you come up with some kind of an idea what this cost is yet? The estimate for the entire project is three hundred twenty thousand. Okay, so. This is, I think that as long as we are prepared with presenting to those people accurate numbers and what it's going to cost them for each homeowner, but I do like the idea of making sure that we have the opportunity for them to finance it uh, and make it as affordable as possible. Yeah, the, the estimate and the, the actual cost of the project, won't, it'll affect our budget, but it won't affect what these people pay. So we change that in the local pre the local improvement bylaw and how we charge for it we're going to be advertising a rate and that's what they pay whether we go over budget or we're under budget council Blore. can you send us the proposal proposal how does it compare to when we went through this uh it's two years ago it's close close even when we did it two years ago we had a set a number and then our asphalt rates came in lower yes is our is these numbers comparable to what our estimate was or what our actual would have been with the lower actual actual and we used we use six different projects to come up with that per foot rate yeah. Councilor just not exactly certain where this is. is this the one that was turned down before like over in that newer development this is the one that was turned down two years ago so it'll do the whole all 12th and then it'll do third street right up to the intersection of 13. That'd be the so, west side, the intersection. That's right. Yeah. So we'll start at 11th, Katie Corner, to the ESRSS property, go all the way to the intersection of 13th, and then all of 12th. Council Gloria. And I assume you're going to try and apply for grants for any of this? The MRIP will be applying for grants on this one. And that's also in the bylaw for how we are going to pay. But so, if we don't get it, we have a backup plan. So if we get the grants, it lowers everybody's amount? No, no it, it lowers the town's portion. Towards the town's portion, town portion. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, so. Councilor Sack. So are the people actually entertaining the thought? Like, is there people asking for it? Or mm -hmm. should we put, yeah. put it somewhere, put, put thought into a different location? We've had calls from a number of residents expecting the letter already. We did tell them that it would come out in January of 2018. So uh, we've had calls expecting the letter to come out. Right. Just didn't want to be yeah. Have you sent a note to the landowners in that area saying this is being thought about and these are what the prices might be? That is what will go out on January 22nd. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So there's no resolution. Okay, yeah. We've got a resolution yeah. in our agenda. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the local improvement process be initiated for installation of curb and gutter and pavement in the 300 block of 12th Avenue South and 1213 block of 3rd Street South. Discussion? All in favor? Motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore, resolve that resolution 2018-021 be tabled. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. Okay. Okay, it's the February G5 meeting, February 12th. Any agenda items? I'll be away then, so be here as well. What is that? What date was that, sir? 12th of February. I won't be here either. <clears throat> when did it get moved to, from the 5th? Yeah, I thought it was the 5th as well. I got the 5th of my Swan Valley West is hosting, and they had to move the date. 
so I will be gone as well. I'm not going to be gone. I'm not going to be I'm not going to the three of us not there? Perfect. So. Three, so you won't be around either? I'm very iffy. Is everyone else going to be able to attend? I'll be there. I'll be there. And you got the agenda item that I put forward regarding airport so, commission funding? Yeah. They may not consider an alternate date? This was no, they, this was their alternate date. And what happened on the 5th? I'm not sure they didn't give any details. Uh, and it's going to be a, ask them if they they could find an alternate date because the three of us can't go. I, I can let them know that. That's all I can ask. We can, uh, we can ask. That's yeah. all I said. <laughs> possible. Whoever can show can show. Like if well, we'll be well represented. Yeah. It might be that other entities are in exactly the same boat. They said, "Holy smokes, we should try an alternate date," or it may not. Be. I think that would be me. What time does that G5 meeting start? Uh, they six. usually start six. at 6. So uh, under item 6-2 then, the local improvement procedure manual and the curbing and gutter paving map are for council's information only. Proposal to uh, subdivide with dealt with that one. Table it. And we're to unfinished business. Uh, the request before from Brent Parahoniak for road access to his property. I talked to, to Mr. Perio, Parahoniak today and uh, he wanted to make it clear that, that uh, he was he was asking over the past few weeks on where we were on, on this decision, but uh, he wanted to make it clear today that this is just for Council's information. He would like to come as a delegation at a later time. He'll schedule, he'll schedule a Julie to come as a delegation to talk about this, but uh, he does want a decision from council on whether we would ex build that lane or not. Did you talk about the possibility of them having to pay for all of it? Yes. Because that's the way it sits here now. Yes. Is how a, how what was his response to that? Uh, well, he brought up how much taxes they've paid over the how many many years the house has been built and. And uh, you know that there's a running business and a, and a, a house, a residence there that's for sale. So, can you maybe you know this now? But if you don't, maybe do a little bit of history. I know you weren't around when all this went out. But what's the history? How did it, it's quite awkward that uh, there's the hotel and the house there. What was first? Did they both own it? Like somebody obviously. Took a risk by either either it was owned by one owner and it was sold and there was no no easement got no subdivision at the time which was not the fault of the taxpayers at large. According to Brent, there's there's no legal easement that they can use that property as access. Mm -hmm. It was simply an agreement between Irv and the previous owner mm -hmm. of that property. So when that when Irv built his house there, how was he planning on access accessing it? That's it. That's. That's it, an agreement with his neighbor. That's my access. It's over now. Yeah. So the taxpayers at large shouldn't be responsible for an agreement that happened a long time ago that between two landowners. Between two landowners who took one of the landowners took a risk that he, that might not be the same owner forever and ever. Right. He's basically he's under uh, I guess his where he sits is is that it is a it's an off situation. It's a fully developed landlocked property, and he's you know he's of the feeling that that everyone else has every developed property in town has access. He feels he's entitled to access as well. Councilor <coughs> Sackle, would be weary because I know of another property that is fully developed and is landlocked, and the owner. The only reason I know this is it's, it's personal, it's my father's property where he, he has a place and he had to go through and get easements and buy property and virtually have his own road. I'm just saying I, I don't necessarily know that this is the only property in the town of Swan River. There may be others. Mm -hmm. Well, we just dealt with one last year over on the, not exactly the same, but quite similar. Mm -hmm. I think uh, in the end, like he said, he, he, he wants you guys to 
have this information, and, and he does want to come as a delegation uh, for when the resolution is there when you guys make a decision. I just think if we pick one, we're setting a precedent. If we choose one, we may have to do another, or another, or three others. Right. Councilor Mori. So this document, who generated that? Is that from your office, or is that from Mr. From Brent? This is from my, my, I did this. Okay. So I, I came up with, <coughs> with the suggestion of the approach. I went to the traffic board. No, I just wanted to make sure I, okay. who, who authored this document, if it was yeah. them or our office. Councilor Glory. For option C that you specified, um, are you still saying that we should take the land or public reserve for him to build the lane? At, at his cost. Yeah, at his cost, but we would still take the land out of public reserve and if, sell to him for... If that's what he chooses, yeah, yeah that could okay. be done. Okay. So if he chooses to come as a delegation, that's his choice. So. Right. <clears throat> okay, Superintendent Works Report. Any questions to Derek from the Superintendent Works Report? Do you have any comments, Derek? Uh, just on, on an item that's not on the report is the, the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess, I guess with just the happenings, everybody knows what's... No. Okay, so we did get a lifelike call on, at 5 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, Ken Kirkpatrick was on call. He tried to get hot sand. He couldn't get it from the private contractor. So the normal protocol is offer the chemical, and uh, he had operators lined up. Eventually, like when he called the pilots back, it was turned down. Uh, that, technically, it wasn't turned down. The pilot said, we'll get back to you, and just that never happened. So you alluded to the chemical. Uh, the, the chemical that the commission purchased a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically our backup plan when we can't get hot sand. We have to apply it, let it do its work, and then sweep it off. Then the plane can land, and it gets rid of the ice. And this, we don't know if he accepted it or not, or just ran out of gas and went home. It was offered, and they said they would contact us, and they just never did. It's not, we don't call back, it's 100% to it's it's them. I think we need to know the answer as to why I didn't call back. Is that stuff not acceptable? We bought it from an entity that says it's acceptable. I have a concern. If we laid it down and, and spent the $7,000 to apply it, yep, I would say for sure. If they said, yes, we will be there, put it on the, on the runway, and we did, and then they didn't come, I would say yes. They, I'm guessing, I don't know, but it would be worth asking. Absolutely. They probably had a plan B already in place and just never looked back. So this was Saturday, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the the, the water came Tuesday night. What happened Wednesday, Thursday, Friday that the sand wasn't put on? We're like not to clear the. We don't we don't clear it normally. We only clear it on an as needed basis. Yes, that was determined in in winter of 2016. Actually, this is the report that was turned down. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we have ice forms when it doesn't rain. Ice forms when, mm -hmm. when uh, and when it, when it when it is sheety like that, sheety. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when there is a skip of snow on top, Mike does leave it. He doesn't like sometimes if we know there's going to be a sunny day, we broom that off because the sun will burn that ice off the runway. But if there's a skip of a snow on there, he'll leave it because that's the only traction there is. It's like walking on the outdoor rink compared to the rink inside. With snow, there's traction. So it's, uh, Mike does the best he can with the conditions we have, with the budget that we have, and that one's the kicker. So All of this was turned down due to budget. Okay, so we store the sand at a, at a private contractor's compound, correct? But we don't have access, like we need to get a hold of him well, to get access to it? It's, it's oh, not ours, so we purchase we it. it. So and okay. right now the hoppers are under construction, so we wouldn't have got it even if they did have a guy. Should we work out some sort of arrangement with the contractor once that for times when I don't expect him to be on call, but maybe give us a key or something or some sort of way we can access it when he's not available? You mean run his facility? No, well, I, I'm not sure the logistics of how, I'm sure you, don't you go in with a loader 
scoop it into it's a truck? A big hopper, right? Oh, it's in a big hopper. I believe it's the, it's it's the cement plant. Oh, okay. Councilor Morial. Um, going through this, and like I keep echoing what Councilor Glory said that the unrealizing budget constraints that this happened on a Tuesday night and that we're dealing with this on a Wednesday or a, a Saturday afternoon. And there was three business days that could have been dealt with where we have options to scrape, brush, or whatever uh, for that. But I think we need to send this back to the commission where they need to um, take a serious look and approach the other G5 consults as to potential other or increased funding. Because um, it, uh, it goes counterproductive where uh, we're taking a wait and see approach um, when an event does happen at the airport to uh, wait for that ice to melt off on its own naturally, um, which when we're advocating for getting northern patient transport to the community and increased services and obstetrics to the facility and we can't provide the emergency backups to get these patients out of there, uh, I think but that's probably talking out of two faces, the sides of our mouth. So uh, I think we need to um, push this back to the like the commission and have them take a look at it and go back to each respectful council and uh, get direction, I guess, as to uh, what direction does the Valley want to do on uh, emergency uh, evacuation of patients. Like, okay, uh, we're, we, on one hand, we're banging our drum on one hand that we want to do this, want to do that, but then on the other hand, we're not doing anything to uh, facilitate that and actually going backwards when it's there. So. Yeah, as, you, as you'll read, the, the plan was to get heated sand at the end of the day Friday, yeah. every Friday from the end, say the end of October to mid-May, and that's what those costs are based on. So that was the plan, just to have it ready, but uh, yeah, the, the costs were too so, high. And so why couldn't we have sand thrown on this on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday? Because we don't have the budget. That was decided in 2016 that we do not, we do not sand when there's no call. It's, it's a, when the pilots are coming, they give us three to four hours notice, they know that. They know that they need it in Swan River, and, uh, and that was the, that was, that's been the way it's So then we sense. have to work up something where um, we have to have, instead of relying on external contractors that may or may not be available, we need to have our own internal processes where we have this heated sand stored locally or ability to generate it if you're taking a reactive approach versus a pre uh, proactive. I, I would agree, so, but yeah, the way, like what we decided yeah. in 16, was a reactive approach, and this is yeah. exactly what happened this week. So, Councilor uh, Sample. Because you learn something every day, I just always assumed that we took care of the runway during working hours or during our staffing hours, and the sand was just for weekend. I didn't actually realize that we never sanded the track or the runway unless it absolutely needed it, so that I just I just thought it was a part of our maintenance or part of our contract with the airport because the town maintains it and the airport commission pays. I just assumed that Monday to Friday when the guys are at work, if the airport needs that puts a way needs, spin on the proposal. Yeah, but I just assumed that's the way it was. I didn't realize. Like I know the proposal that we turned down with the sand buying heated sand every Friday. I thought that was just to cover the weekends. I didn't realize that we have. Basically, we're not maintaining it unless it has to. I think the town has to make a proposal to the airport commission saying, if we take care of the sucker during the week, the sand or the chemical is basically for weekend when we don't have people on the job. So you're, you're saying that we would determine an amount of ice on the runway, and when it reaches that point, point we get rid of it at whatever it costs? through the winter months maybe we have to schedule or propose that we touch that runway once a week and if we don't we won't bill for it but in the worst case scenario once a week to send our grader or our sweeper or whatever the case well, whatever. we're definitely there it's this hot sand that doesn't get put on we go out there with the sweeper and the grader we're out there all the time during the week so why wouldn't we have taken care of the ice well the, the grader can't get rid of the ice Neither can the sweeper. It's either sun, heated sand, or a chemical. Hmm. So we need to come up with a process where that heated sand needs to get on the day after the freezing rain. So whatever we want, whatever we want to do, whatever service we want to provide, we can provide it. We just need the money to do it. Councilor White. I echo uh, Councilor DeWay's concern. 
if, if we don't have some mechanism where we can contact the people who are storing that sand 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and get it out there, we're, we're hooped regardless of whatever plan we design on. We, we did have a proposal in 2016 to pay for one of their employees to be on call throughout the weekends and those winter months, and it was much, much farther than the numbers, way higher than the numbers that are on that sheet. It wasn't even entertained. Well, there's been a lot of discussion on this, and, and I guess I probably had forgotten about this here because I thought, geez, you know, we had the, the whole event happening on Wednesday, and then all of a sudden here we're on Saturday, and we have this situation that comes, and, and we can't even accept a, a plane in. And, and I don't know how the serious the situation was, but I would certainly hope that if, if something really serious did happen, that we would be able to react to it. And so, and I get the feeling from you that even if there was a need for call for sand or whatever, that it wasn't even available at all. So I don't know what that whole process is of producing heated sand, if it requires a special uh, heating, uh, the cement plant. Whatever plant, whatever it is. But I think you know, everybody's saying now that we need to we need to have a better approach. We can't we can't be caught with our pants down because this is this is serious, I think. Councillor Sam. We do have a backup plan and the backup plan is the chemical. And this chemical is supposedly approved. It's it, it's it's run in different airports. It's it's for this purpose. If the sand isn't available, we have these bulk bags full of this so it was rejected. It was rejected, but I we. I can't say know. it was rejected. It was the the words from the pilot were, "We will get back to you about that," and they never did. Well, Here you have to remember the final decision and the ultimate decision is the pilot's decision. So, like I said, we don't know for sure, but I would believe that as soon as we said we cannot get hot sand, they were on the plan B already. Okay, Dauphin, and, and once those wheels got rolling, once we. You know, once the pilots called back and we said, "Okay, we can, we have guys ready for this stuff. Just give us the word." Probably Plan B's wheels were rolling already, and they said, "We've got schedules. We've got future schedules." And I'm assuming this. I have no idea, but that exactly. makes sense I think to that's me. Exactly. That's a key point. We are assuming here. Julie's going to be in contact and find that out. That pilot has to be chatted with. Say, hey, what happened here? Because we have a we have a Plan B. Did I read between the lines that Plan B stuff wasn't ready? It wasn't in the building? Not our plan B, the pilot's plan B. The chemical. Is the chemical available? The chemical is chemical ready, ready to go. We had an okay. operator ready. All right. I, I have been in contact with Life Flight, and uh, I did get a report back from the pilot, but it was uh, incomplete. He didn't talk about the chemical deasser. He only talked about the sand. So I put another request in okay. to have um, the lady that I spoke with speak to the pilot again to confirm you know, why he didn't accept or why he didn't get back to us about uh, the offer of the chemical de Yes, Councillor Sack. So maybe we should, I guess, explain to whoever's on call that first they should, when they answer the phone, say, our first attack, attack is we're going to try for sand. If we don't have the sand, we have this other option. All at once. Yeah, all yes. at once. Don't say phone them back and say, we don't have the sand, but, because it's already moving, if we tell them that we do have plan B, when we tell them what plan A is, yeah. they may realize, okay, that's the route we're going to take, right. and you call back and say, the sand isn't there, but we need 45 minutes to apply this, this, we're ready for you. Right. Yes, the pilots know that it needs to be applied, given time to work, and then it needs to be removed off the runway. And the Councilor Jacobson and then Councilor Moore. So just might me on this chemical then. So this chemical then, as soon as it's ordered or whatever, it's applied. How quick does it act? Does it react very quickly? Yeah, is that, is that just, temperature sensitive as well? It's good till minus fifty, they say. Okay. Uh, it would have worked. It's just it depends on how much ice and how long it's out there. We would be monitoring it constantly, but we know that we have to get it off the runway before the plane lands. Okay. Some more. Okay, with that, like I understand, uh, Julie's looking for contact with getting um, back or word back from Life Flight as to why they didn't respond to the sand offer or, uh, pardon me, the uh, chemical offer. But I think uh, we need to develop a formalized process where we involve um, government air services 
um, to make them aware that this is the procedure when you call in for a runway update. If there is ice on it, our first option is sand. Our second option is chemical. This is all pre-communicated and figured out well in advance. It's a standard operating procedure between them um, so that they know if you can't get sand on that, they can say, can you lay down your chemical? And then it's all done in there so that it's, um, it's all pre-written and not trying to figure out in the middle of the night. So it's a, it's a standing operating procedure that uh, the town enters with or with uh, government air services. For that. I, I echo that. I think that's a good idea because the, the de-icing uh, material that we did buy is very recent and maybe they don't know there is a plan B and they should be aware that you know, I believe the Ireland's uh, um, public works did check with LifeLight to see if that was acceptable before it was, when it was being researched so they should be aware of it but maybe not all pilots are aware of it. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Is, I, I keep thinking of worrying. Is the fly in the ointment accessing it wherever it's stored? The chemical's not a problem. The chemical is available in our shed and our staff. Oh, What's it, our shed? Yes. Yes. It's, it's in our shed. sand that's somewhere else. else. Ah. We'll use the chemical if we get it. Thank you. Any other questions to Derek? Yeah, Council Sun. Just with this beautiful minus 50 weather, how are we making out with freezing pipes and Everything's okay so far? Uh, we do have a, it's not a main break, but a service break on our side of the service down on Crescent. Uh, on the sewer side, just a whole lot of complaints over frozen uh, sewer stacks. And so there's a lot of smells. It's like they'll dry out their peach after they'll suck it down, and the sewer gases go in the house. So we have quite a few complaints on that front, but other than that, on the utility side, everything. Seems to be ship shape. Outside also, of one that's Also, on the lift station on Dixie, there when the lights flashing, has that been figured out? That is fixed, yeah. Okay. Any other questions to Derek? If not, then we have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Resolve the Superintendent Works Report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Fries, and resolve the handy van report for December 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Fries, and resolve that the service tracker report for November and December 2017 be received. Discussion or comments? All in favor? Carried. Let's see some people are using it. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that the radar speed sign report for November 2017 being received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resulted that the bylaw enforcement officer report for December 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, you have the management minute, uh, a management meeting minutes. Any questions <coughs> to Julie on them? Councillor Deloria. Uh, actually, I see Terry references he was talking with the uh, engineer regarding the utility rate study, and so I want to redirect that to Derek. When will we be getting our review or whatever, whatever that we had? We kind of wanted it quick, and that it's bird September. has flown. Yeah. Uh, I know I've mentioned they've apologized, but uh, to be honest, it's it's still it's still with AE. It has not been sent to the PUB. Uh, but we're going to see it before it goes to the PUB. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. I and it, that. we're looking at a month. Can you just confirm that 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 we will see it before it goes to the PUB? Well, yeah. They they do know that it's okay. it's with Ken Anderson right now. Uh, 
like I, I believe it was the last December meeting, it never did go to Ken Anderson the first time uh, that I informed council, so they are about three weeks behind in that. But still, it's, it's no excuse on their part. They have apologized for how late they've been. Uh, I'll request that it's here before the next council meeting. Yeah. Okay, well, Tom. Okay. Any uh, feedback from CN relative to the drainage and the culvert itself? Oh, the there's um, a meeting with CN. There was an email came from CN. Did you get that? The guy should have been in contact. I think he was in contact with you from CN that wanted to meet with us directly about any issues we might have. Yes, I remember that email. I'd yeah. like to be part of that. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you explained you had too many meetings. Well, I, I expect that you'll have the yes, drain, you can be part of it. The drain pulled. That's a perfect opportunity to bring this up yeah. with them. Yes. Yeah. We should do that. But it's it is not on our budget for two thousand eighteen. So they'll do it. They plan it. Excellent. And they're flooding our land, we're considering suing them. Let's I would be we threatening go. that. Well, it's their drain, is their culvert, it's okay, flooding we'll our town. On. Okay, we'll put that on call back. Yeah. I think he even had a date there when he would be here. Was it Finn? Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, I think he did. Okay. Councilor Sackle reports. Oh, uh, geez, not too much to report. Um, just briefly met with the two ladies from Valley in the Mountains, and they just expressed their concern with the two representatives that don't seem to come to their meetings. And we're just asking if, if somebody could please come. And I offered my assistance just because RISE is working with tourism and that. So if one of you guys wants, I could go to the meetings for you guys. But who's on that for? Well, I joined in. I think well, I'm here. David in, so. It's kind of hard to attend a meeting when you get the notice two days before the meeting. So. And then when you have other things planned, it's... I agree. I'm just passing on some friendly information. I spoke with her. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Other than that, I don't really have anything else to well, ask. Um, had a settlement services meeting last night, and I don't know if you all got invitations. Nope. Okay. It's a New Year potluck, and it's sponsored by Settlement Services. It's at the United Church um, the 19th, Friday. So you're all welcome to come and uh, meet Yulia, who is the coordinator. And uh, What time? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Um, January 8th, out to Benito to the library meeting. And... Uh, John Thorpe is our new uh, member at large for the town, and uh, he's, um, he's very interested in solar heat and has gone to Hydro and brought us a presentation, and we all panicked when we saw how much it would cost to put solar panels in the library. Anyway, and then I guess the only change down there is they've changed the uh, amount of time you can have a book out. I have a whole list of um, circulation if anybody wants to know how many books go in and out of that place and uh, any information that you do want to have. The uh, Festival of Trees was a booming success again and lots of people, over 900 people through the library that week alone. Um, that's everything. Okay, Councilor White. Uh, 3rd of January, I met with Megan Gray, and we we're talking about the possibility of getting our, our small team again to talk about the needs, uh, medical needs of our community, and so the goals. And I know Glenn and David do that for February 22nd. February 22nd? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, January, Jason. pardon? Jason, February 22nd. What time? It'll be we? probably at noon again. Okay, so you please. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Megan's pretty excited about uh, some things, and uh, Glenn will share after with some of the things that have already been accomplished. <coughs> uh, January 9th, I met with Dr. Claire and Dr. Sigerson, and we called uh, President Lustad from UCN because of the storm that Tuesday, Wednesday. He couldn't make it, complete, but he was emphatic. He was excited about the possibility of moving a, a dental assistant. 
office of some sort in Swan River. Then I went to the RTAM, retired teachers meeting, and uh, they asked me to talk about what's happening uh, with medical stuff, and I alluded to the 10 doctors and the possibility, embryonic at best, of a CT scan being here. And they said they certainly were excited about that. Uh, Swan Valley Sport Fish is working closely with RISE, as uh, Councilor uh, uh, Sack on those, and they're doing a lot of the mapping, uh, accessing maps and trails throughout the Duck and Porcupine Mountains. And that's three staff that uh, Swan Valley Sport Fish, I believe, is paying their salary at the moment. And uh, they're pretty excited about being part of that team. And uh, hopefully the Swan Valley Sport Fish entity gets mentioned in some of the things that RISE says they're doing, because certainly Swan Valley Sport Fish is doing it too. So those, the young people need some ink. Uh, today, uh, January 16, I met with Tim Mandel, a superintendent of schools, and uh, Lou Taylor. Lou is looking at some possible plans for a snow bike, as I ride a bike with the big tires, uh, cross-country ski and snowshoe trails within the community. Most of it is on the periphery. And I, I'm pretty comfortable that Swan Valley Outdoors will put money into something whether they buy a groomer or get the groomer from uh, Parks Branch and or Skidoo. And the people who have done it in the past have retired. Uh, we should drop a note to them sometime. Uh, <coughs> Tom Norman and Don Thompson are not doing that anymore, so there has to be some plan that the trails are not getting groomed. So Lou's taken under his, his arm to make uh, all that happen. He's looking at litigation issues and things of that, no of that note. And, uh, do, what else? A personnel meeting today. I think there's some good ideas involved. These business guys have great ideas on how to evaluate and encourage people to be self-motivated and have dreams. Thank you. Councilor Moore. Uh, the only thing I had today was uh, today before this meeting was the personnel committee uh, meeting to uh, prepare uh, for contract negotiations uh, for upcoming. Other than that, nothing else. Okay, uh, last week we had a recreation committee meeting. We started working on budget and uh, capital uh, capital purchases and new programming at the uh, at the pool, which will also include a, a life garden component with the Swan Valley School Division. So there's there's a uh, few things happening there. Uh, and then today I had a personnel committee meeting uh, discussing. Uh, Upcoming contract negotiations, so everything's well underway. Councilor yeah. Jacobson. Well, I can uh, echo the same things here. I was at the personal meeting here just uh, before this meeting here, so we're moving on towards uh, the contract negotiations, obviously. Uh, with the recreation meeting that we had, we will have an opportunity to look at a report here later on in the meeting, but uh, some fee changes there are nominal uh, coming up this year. Um, I echo what uh, Councillor Delory says about the opportunity for uh, lifeguard uh, programming and training and all that from with uh, partnering with the school division. So I thank the school division for partnering with us for op creating this opportunity. Of course, the pre-budget um, and I'm looking at we're also looking at everything right down to the possibility of maybe reducing some services and recreation as budgets are tighter and we have to look at everything. And one just as a side note here, just a couple weeks ago, my brother was in, in town here and he happened to go snowmobiling and it happened to be, it was an, an accident and um, it seemed serious at the beginning, you know, and once he went to the hospital and all that, um, I was speaking with one of the doctors there, TJ, and he said, you know, basically we need to have the CT scan in Swan River to see if his injury was really serious or not, you know, and if he had any internal damage. So his example there at the hospital that night was pretty serious and uh, proved that we do need a CT scan in Swan River. He was ended up life lighted to Winnipeg, but uh, nothing too serious, just banged up really good and he'll heal. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we talked about CT scan and thank uh, Councillor Morio and the other council members for their input on the proposal. So that proposal uh, on the economic case for a CT scanner is in the works, okay? Uh, it's been presented to the Board of the Health Facilities Foundation and the Health Facilities Foundation, uh, they're supportive of it. So if it comes down to splitting the costs of it, they're prepared to put up some of the money for part of the cost of the CT scanner. 
I also met with the Swan River Lions Club and see if any of the Lions Clubs were interested in partnering. Uh, I didn't have a solid proposal for them there, but uh, if I could quote from the Lions, this is a no-brainer for the Swan Valley. So uh, they would be on side, I get the feeling they would be on side to support the, the program. So last night I had a hospital foundation meeting, and at that meeting, um, the only question, and we talked about it with the proposal, is that we were under the understanding that the area in our hospital where public health is now was set up for a T CT scanner. So the first question that came from the Prairie Mountain Health people is, where are those people going to go? So that's something that we'll have to work on with the proposal. Yeah, and the proposal, there's there's two options in there okay. for, that are addressed with that. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So the next, the next step is to work with our MLA and get a meeting with the Minister of Health. I think it's probably better than just dropping that in an envelope and sending to the Minister of Health. Mm -hmm. That somebody go to Winnipeg and make the presentation <coughs> to them and to the people that are. Um, having heard what you said tonight, should we make a small modification of the proposal to even stress even more that the capital dollars would come from locally here? Done. Done? It's done. Okay. okay. Then on the first draft, no, it, was, it was there, but now that we've had you know, some verbal confirmations, it'd be good to stress that. So with the foundation, some things that were approved last night, there was a request came from Prairie Mountain Health to repurpose uh, four uh, beds that weren't being used in Benito Health Facility for interim uh, care, and that, or transitional care. So people that, uh, there are actually right now seven people in the valley that are waiting to be placed uh, in personal care home or the lodge here, and uh, the facility at Benito would be transitional. So. There would be four beds that would be opened up, and the foundation agreed to put $12,000 to the renovations of those four rooms, so that would take that list down to three of their transition. That means they would be there until a bed came up for them in Swan Valley. There's been some concern that they're not long-term beds, they're transitional beds. A big issue that talking with Prairie Mountain Health people is that uh, they've had off, they've offered people to be placed in Benito and local people are turning it down. So what happens if they turn down a placement in, the, in Benito, that means they're in a hospital bed in our hospital. It could be used for, I don't know what, there's a special name for that type of acute care. care. <laughs> acute care. They're certainly taking acute care beds while they're waiting for placement in. So three of them could be in this transitionary transition room. Okay, also uh, at the meeting that we had with the doctors, uh, uh, and uh, Dr. Burnside made his, made his presentation of some of the equipment that they wanted. The first thing was a blood pressure monitor, and the foundation said that they would prove $5,000 for the blood pressure monitor. The other two things that were on there, um, Prairie Mountain Health indicated that that's going to be in their capital budget, and part of it was the equipment for surgery, so when Dr. Fund comes back that they will have the Equipment he needs. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> uh, probably forgot something. Just a comment, thank you so much for doing that. But as soon as we take our foot off the pedal, guys, we're going to go backwards. I think the things that you're doing with the CT scan and getting this equipment, we need, obviously need an anesthetist, we need a speech pathologist, we need physiotherapists. We have to yeah, the matter of that I did forget something. The matter of a physiotherapist was talked about by Prairie Mountain Health and the foundation, and the foundation board is acceptable. Or is uh, if they're trying to recruit a, a, a physiotherapist for Swan River, we'd be prepared to offer some sort of an incentive. You know, can, uh, it's for healthcare professionals, doctors, and if we need physiotherapists, uh, we would definitely be able to work something to provide some sort of incentive, whatever it might be. Uh, to attract a physiotherapist. That just goes hand in hand with the proposed orthopedic program. Mm -hmm. so. Well, good stuff's happening, guys. Good teamwork. Oh, Julie, I forgot about you. Okay. I keep losing my screen. Um, the only <coughs> thing I want to report is that I received a box um, full of collection material. So I've been spending some of my time um, figuring out what I need to do and what we need to do to prepare for the upcoming election. 
and um, I do have candidate handbooks as well in that box. And uh, there's been other municipalities that have been sending emails around asking questions about polling stations and all this sort of stuff. So I've been participating in those. And that's all I want to report today. So we'll continue on. Bylaw number one, 2018. We have the motion moved by Councillor Sack, the second by Councillor White. Resolved that bylaw one, 2018, being bylaw of the town of Swan River, providing for the control of traffic and parking of vehicles, be read a second time. Discussion? Councillor Jacobson. Just, I think, some errors that I found that I don't know if that should be corrected or not, but 13E, um, south side of Main Street between 9th Avenue South and 10th Avenue. I believe that should probably say 11th Avenue. Um, <coughs> south side of 1st Street North between 6th. Oh, sorry, no, that's, that's not it. Here, what was that here? The one with uh, Main Street between Nine. Yeah, that's okay. Sixteen D. I don't know if you want it. No parking within the, the intersection of Eleventh Avenue South and First Street South. That was at the request of Councillor Morio. Why? But who would be parking at any intersection in the town of Swan River? Yeah, it yeah. happens. There's uh, just as an example. 10th Avenue North and 3rd Street North, right north of the S curves, north of the rink. There's an intersection there. There's a few car. There's it's not no parking there, so there's a few cars that park on the west side. I would hope the people don't want to park at any intersection in the Downs One River. Not just hopefully the, they wouldn't, but they're, they're not the, all no parking. I guess you should say that. <laughs> yeah, they are. Pardon? On on 16D, there are people parking within that. 15, 20 foot spot between the two driveways. It, it's when it's a T intersection. Both those examples are T intersections. Yeah. So some people are parking right here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, so okay. if you if you miss a stop sign, you'll slide right into their vehicle. Okay. Or you have to go around their vehicles, which narrows the intersection. Then. Okay. Um, there was a request from a resident for Spec Road and Sixth Avenue West, another T, mm -hmm. at the end of Dixie, to have no parking inside that intersection as well. So if there is any, they, they should be included with this. Then I would assume. So it's we just not make all intersections in the town of Swan River are no parking. We can say that. Yeah, no. that, that would simplify it as far as I'm concerned. Right. Is, um, that, is that the wish? Sure. Yeah. 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 And then now, just, sorry. We have the resolution. We're going to have to amend the resolution. Yep. Well, what we can do is... We can amend uh, this. We're going to have a third reading anyways, right? Yeah, we can table the uh, third reading resolution if you like. And we can bring the third reading to the next meeting. Okay. And then the last one was 22, uh, parking on a uh, street for more than seven days. I would have to assume that you may mean seven consecutive days. Yeah, yeah, that was basically, we had no teeth for, a, say, a derelict vehicle. If it was registered, yeah. we could do nothing with it. So this basically lets us... That control. should read seven consecutive days. We can add that word. Yeah. Okay. That's clarity. Yeah. Okay, and so we'll make those changes, but we'll need a resolution <coughs> on the table with their reading. 13, yeah. 13E... E. So the south side of Main Street between 9th and 10th is the entrance to the hospital. No, no. We want to go all the way to 11th? Uh, oh, yeah, because there's, there's two-hour parking from the entrance to the hospital to 11th. Right. Oh, I see. So 10th is considered the entrance. Yeah. Right. Uh, so it was the emergency So then, entrance. then it's correct. Then. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Just a comment. I think maybe we're going to refer, give it to Ken on page 2, number 9. Uh, Unless required by traffic, blah blah blah. It's really a fence for any person to stop or stand or park a vehicle except the MERS vehicle on any roadway other than parallel with the curb heading in the direction of the vehicular traffic. So on our street, it happens often guys will pull over on the wrong side of the road to visit or whatever, and then they take off right into the traffic, right? They're not going with the flow. 
and I see that around town often. People are leaving their vehicles parked on the wrong side of the street, and I would encourage Ken to have a look at that. Because I think it's, if I'm seeing it frequently, it's... He has handed out a few tickets recently Good. for that infraction. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, all in favor of the resolution? Okay. So you have the motion to... This will be to table that resolution for the third reading. The motion moved by Councillor Delore Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, resolve that resolution 2018-029 be table. Discussion in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White. Resolve the accounts as followed, but hereby approve for payment. General accounts from check 21826 to 21898 for a total of 267,231.92. And payroll accounts from check 4142 to 4154 for a total of 112,494.14. Councillor Jacobson. Um, more of a comment. Um, I like that uh, Terry has done this for us, but uh, my comment was on check number 21863 to the SOCAN for us to play music in the wellness centers costing us over $2,000 a year. That's absolutely highway robbery. That's uh, a fee, I believe, that we yeah, have to pay. That's the uh, royalties for music. Yeah. Yeah. Be in the rink, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Councilor Sackler. Check number 002852. It wasn't on one. Terry never picked up on that one. Valley Water and Hydro Bag Limited. For 120, I have, I couldn't tell you. Could it be water for fire? I don't know. I'm not sure. I couldn't say. Constable Maybe, already. Maybe use um, 21879, yeah. it's in Terry's list. Uh, from Nortex Solutions, it's Fire Reporter software. What is this new software, or is it software we've always used, or what? What is this going to do for us if it's a new software? I believe that's a subscription that the fire chief uses to mark you know, where fire hydrants are, oh, okay. where the fires are, okay. and stuff, so that they have an interactive map. Yeah. So I believe it's the ongoing subscription. Okay. okay. And then I got a, a whole the whole bunch. Of, there's four checks to Bell MTS. Uh, for varying amounts from uh, $1,100 to $70. I assume this is all our telephone and internet service. Do we have somebody that, like obviously uh, we have a bunch of different facilities that have, there's somebody that analyzes them to make sure we're getting the best deal, that sure there's some cell phones in there, some internet in there, and I think we're on Westman actually for internet, so there's probably. We've actually just switched over. Back to MPS? No. Oh. We just switched over to Westman. Okay. Um, so. Because we're going to get better internet and we're going to be paying less for phone service and internet. So, so all our services will be with, besides cell phones, will be with Westman Net? Pretty much. I think we just have one, um, we have one phone line at the fire hall that will stay MTS. We have one uh, phone line at the water treatment plant that will stay MTS. We have one cell phone, um, or two, a couple cell phones, right? The yeah. water treatment plants. And other than that, we have pretty much switched over. I, I guess my concern is, Every facility manager is dealing with their, their their needs in their own little silo. I just wonder if there's anybody that looks at this from a big picture perspective, make sure that we can be bundling or, or you know, maybe we are doing that. Maybe this is the best we can I, get. I can ask Terry if he's looked at them recently mm -hmm. thoroughly. Um, and obviously sure somebody is if, if we're switching providers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Has the last time we did, we talked to our technical service rep. I can't remember her name. But she did look at our use and say, yeah, you've got the right plans for here, the right plans for this. Okay. That, that was probably two years ago. Mm -hmm. I believe even with our town owned cell phones, you can get a pool plan that has a pool of 
the minutes that are accessible to all the phones that are on that yeah. plan. So and we and we did have that when we had more cell phones on the plan, but now we we just have a couple. So yeah. so we, oh, right, we went to the yeah, thing right. where we just pay people, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. All right. As long as someone's looking after that, just the amount of bills just kind of caught my attention. Yeah. Okay. Are, you, are we satisfied with that? Yeah. yeah. All in favor of the resolution? The motion moved by Councillor Morio Sick. I, I have an answer for the chat. Okay. Uh, 21852 to Valley Water and Hydro Bath. It says here it was for 2,000 gallons of water hauled on December 6th to the recycling depot. They have, a, they have a system in their Water supply. Okay. And that's our bill? Yep. Mm, so we, we have a septic bill and a water bill for that building. The motion moved by Councilor Morial, second by Councilor Deloria, resolved the Town of Swan River 2018 schedule of fees, rates, and prices be approved. Discussion? Councilor yeah. Morial. Uh, I'm good with everything except uh, just one clarification on number 11. I guess that's a whole new paragraph. Um, I imagine that's just for like public uh, reserve closure and stuff like that. This is not something like when someone wants to buy a, a lot from the town. This is... No, mm -hmm. this is, uh, for example, the... Uh, I don't want to say names, I guess, but yeah, yeah. There is a public reserve taken out and that we sold to mm -hmm. on the other side of the river. Okay. And that's a year, over a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to be sending them an invoice for several thousand dollars. They're not going to be happy because it's... Yeah. Kind of done. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure that this just wasn't to yeah. specific land lots being purchased. Councilor Delorme. So in number 11, uh, it says $500 land price. Are you saying that every public reserve is going to have a land price of $500? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. $500 land price or less. Like the lawyer fees, the survey fees. And the five hundred dollar land price, if they add up to less than four thousand dollars, right? So that it, you guys can sell it for ten bucks. Like mm -hmm. it's basically, it's basically what it's going to cost us. We're going to give it back. Well, what if we sell, sell it for ten thousand dollars? Well, yeah, it'll be a five hundred dollar land price. But or no, sorry. Uh, the, the reason why I put that in there is because I had come and asked, you know, what we should charge for the little piece of land, right? $500 was the answer, but, but, but I understand that that may not be the case for every situation. So maybe we could just take, take that amount out and say land price. Is that, would that be better? Because, you know, every situation is going to be different. Pardon? I'm trying to think of why we put a value to a land price that we need one in there. Uh, yeah, we yeah need, I would just take the value out. Yeah, I would out. just take the value out. That's what I would do. Yeah. Because for, for those couple situations, that's what it was. But maybe for the next one, it may not be. So yeah, is this attached to the resolution as a schedule? Um, like, I don't mind passing it tonight, but I don't want to come back a year from now and have a dispute with somebody. and. Yeah, no, it'll, oh, it'll be the, attached to the So do, do we have the, the printed copy that will be attached so that we can initial the, the stroke out? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I guess if... I've kind of wrote on mine here. Who, who's the mover and secor on that? It says a ton of sort of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is going to be the copy that gets attached to the yeah. resolution? Yeah, okay. we'll use that page. So the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore, resolved the Town of Swan River 2018 schedule of fees, rates, and prices be approved. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. This is effective right now. Yep. 
So any quotes for the landfill rate that you've already made at the old we'll, rate? We'll hold those, yeah. Okay. Motion moved by Councilor Morial, second by Councilor Delora, resolve that the Chief Administrative Officer be authorized to sign the building inspector contract as attached for Schedule A. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councilor Memorial, second by Councilor Delore, resolve that the Federation of Canadian Municipalities membership in the amount of $782.54 be approved for payment. Discussion, Councilor Memorial. Uh, I believe this is the same one that we cancelled our subscription last year because yeah. we were, yeah. Gas Act wasn't uh, associated with it. So. All in favor? Sorry. Opposed? Defeated. It's a nicely worded uh, letter to try and get us back. But. Mm -hmm. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore, resolved that the Swan Valley Settlement Services and Immigration Report for January and December 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Council Delore, seconded by Morio, second by Delore, resolved that the Swan Valley Settlement Services and Immigration 2017 to 2020 budget be received. Discussion, Councilor Jacobson, and then Councilor Morio. I really like the, the, the point in here that they ended up with a bit of a surplus this year, and they're allowing that to be added to this year's budget to uh, lessen our impact on our own budget. So good on them. Councilor Moore. Um, I think we need to give this group uh, kudos that their projected budgets from 1718 to 1920 uh, shows a downward trend versus an upward trend. So looks like they're really watching their cash over there, which is to be commended. All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, resolved that Swan Valley Settlement Services and Immigration 2018-2019 contribution in the amount of $7,200 be approved for payment. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. I was sort of confused about the next request from the con or the conservation district because I was the I was the they got rid of me. This is a hint the, that they want a new member. This, this is the trend these days, don't you realize? So, for clarification, Mr. Bobick is our to the main. Board He's on the main board, and yeah. you're to the sub. I was on the sub district. Yeah. Yeah. Lobstick Lake. Lobstick Lake, Lobstick Creek. Creek. <laughs> Creek. Yeah. Well, we appoint both to the sub district, right? And then the, the, yeah, the between the sub districts, they have their own yeah, yeah, Glenn could be on the main okay. board next time. Yeah. That's why I thought we had people there, so I was confused too. Well, yeah, I, 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 I nominate the uh, You carry on, Glenn. Okay, the motion moved by Councillor Jacobs and second by Councillor Lorraine that I be appointed to the Swan River sub district member to the Conservation District Board. All in favor? Carry. Motion moved by Councilor Jacobson, second by Councilor Delorier, uh, resolved that the Recreation Committee, January 10th, 2018, meeting minutes be received. Discussion? Yeah. Um, I just want to pass on kudos for, to Julie for implementing this amongst her, her managers and amongst the different committees is having the committee meet minutes coming to Council, because I know in the past that didn't used to happen, and this is uh, good. All in favor of the resolution? Here. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, seconded by Councillor Lord, is all that Cody Slaughter's position be changed from casual lifeguard to part time lifeguard effective January 2nd, 2018. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Oh, The motion moved by Council Delorier, second by Councilor Morial, resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into the meeting, close the meeting to the public and go into committee. All in favor? 
Correct.